Spectre Console allows you to turn your C Sharp Console apps into visually appealing, informative applications. In this series of videos, we are learning how to take full advantage of this library in 10 minute chunks. The source code is available as a link in the description. In this lesson, we're going to display status messages, including waiting spinners while you wait for a task to be completed. If you like this series, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and visit imtimcorey.com for more training resources. Let's get started. So what we're going to do is start with a very basic status message. Okay, so we're going to say ANSI console dot status. And then in here, we're going to say dot start and we're give a initial message. Let's just say loading like so. And then we're going to pass in a, uh, a context, let's call it CTX, and create a method here that we can then do our work inside of. So this is the, what's gonna, all inside this curly braces right here is where all the work gets done, where we're waiting for things to be accomplished. So let's just start off with a thread dot sleep and we'll sleep for, I don't know, three seconds, probably good. Um, just so we can see what this is going to look like. Just this, that's it. So now we run this and we do, we see loading, we see this little like spinner thing here while it's late waiting and now it's done. Now notice it's, you know, complete and there's no more, the, the application is closed. So that was kind of cool, but what happened actually? Well, while this was waiting, it was showing this loading message and it was showing a spinner. So we can change that spinner if we want. Uh, so for example, we could say uh, context dot spinner. We can say spinner dot known, let's spell it known correctly. And then we can pick from a list of, of potential options. Let's just go with aesthetic for now. So that's going to be our new spinner instead of the um, the one we just saw. So again, let's make this a little longer so we have a little more time to appreciate what's going on. And we will run this and we do, we'll see this different kind of loading spinner going on while it is loading. Now I do want to point out before we go on that this isn't going to work in all shells and all terminals. So if we run through Visual Studio, it has a different spinner. It has this, this is like the fallback spinner. So that spinner is for shells and terminals that don't support the um, UTF-8 characters and all the things that are going on there. Now, why do you want something like this? Well, if we're gonna be doing work where we're waiting for something to happen, then we might wanna have that spinner until it's done. And when it's done, we could just move on and the spinner goes away as, as well as a loading message. But let's make this a bit more realistic. Let's call our API and download, oh, I don't know, maybe 20 courses. So to do that, let's change this because we have both start and start async. Let's try to change to start async since I want to do some asynchronous work inside of here, which is probably more likely what you want to happen. Now, I do want to point out real quickly here, uh, let's await this, there we go. So I do want to point out real quickly though, that even though we're doing this asynchronously, that the code inside here is not necessarily thread safe. What I mean by that is you need to come back to this thread in order to update the spinner or update what's on the console. Don't try to update what's on the console from another thread. So be careful of that. You always want to come back to the, the UI thread to do the, the UI updates. Okay, so let's, um, we'll keep the aesthetic uh, spinner for now. Let's get rid of the thread.sleep. And instead what we're going to do is we're going to say string JSON response equals await. And then we have helpers dot fetch. And then we'll put this on a new line and use our string interpolation and say HTTPS and the sample sample api.com slash courses slash 
and it'll put i plus i plus one, which we don't have yet. So where are we gonna get i from? Well, we're going to um, put this in a for loop. So let's let's do that right now. Let's cut this out and say for, and we'll say i like so, and say let's say two twenty, and I'm gonna start from one and go less than 21, just because I don't want to do plus one for everything. So let's just say I here. Okay, so we're going to call this API for one particular course. And when we're done, we want to say, hey, we downloaded that course. So first we're gonna say ctx.status, and we're gonna say string interpolation, downloading course, and then we'll put which course it is and dot, dot, dot. So we're gonna change the status message, which we start off with loading, but we're gonna go right to downloading course number X. And then after we're done, I want to say ANSI console dot markup line. And we will say again, strand interpolation course, and let's change the, the color of this uh, to red just to have something fun to do. We're going to say I, and then we'll close it out, uh, download it. Okay, so what's going to happen here is we're going to change the spinner to the aesthetic spinner. We're going to loop through from 1 to 20, essentially. And we're going to change the status to downloading whatever course number it is. We're going to fetch that from a real API. And then we're going to say, hey, I downloaded that course. Now it's going to be a bit faster because of the fact that we are um, waiting for something, but it's not, it's not a big call, all right? I don't have it on a fast server, but still it should be pretty fast. And then once it's done, we're going to put a status message saying, hey, we're done that. So this is a more realistic expectation of what you might see from a status message. So as you can see, downloading course one, and now we've downloaded these courses and it it kind of tracks down a list. And when we're done, we just have the list of, hey, these are the things that have been done. So this might be, I accomplished these tasks. I upload this data. I change these things. Whatever the case may be, you leave behind the, the uh, result messages, but you don't have that, um, that, that waiting message with the, the downloading anymore. So that's how to use the status message both synchronously and asynchronously. Like I said, you'll probably use async more just because you're probably awaiting things if you have these status messages. Otherwise you get these weird sleeps in there or or something else. But, um, you know, maybe you find some reason to, to have it be synchronous, but for the most part, you probably have an await and then start async and async context. And then just whenever you have awaits in here, um, like, like so, then you're, you're covered. So either way, the performance isn't, isn't any different. Okay. So if you do it synchronously versus asynchronously, the performance of this status message isn't any different. Um, it's just whether or not you are doing asynchronous calls, whether you need the asynchronous or not. Okay. But that is status, how to use it, even how to change the spinners. And yes, there is a whole list of spinners to look at and play around with. Now, later on in this course, we are going to create our own custom spinner. So that's coming up. But for now, you can pick from a long list of spinners. There's tons in there. Um, probably everything you ever needed. Okay. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.